User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugetastic.com. Hi, it's Mike with Ugetastic again. I'm sitting down with Carolyn Chandler, and we're at the Web Visions 2013 conference in the Gene Sisko Film Center in Chicago, Illinois. Carolyn is a, has written a couple books, or she's working on her second book, on UX design for beginners. And thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me, Carolyn. Can you tell me a little bit about your book and, and the topics you're speaking on here today at the conference um, and, and how you got involved with uh, Web Visions? Sure, yeah. Um, well, I've been, I've been teaching um, beginners, mostly continuing education, uh, user experience design through a few different schools. At first I did that at DePaul University and then since then the Starter League right. and uh, ADMCI. And over the course of doing that, really started to find the lessons that were resonating with people mm -hmm. and the kinds of activities that were making things click for them. You know, so those you, aha kind of moments. So you were, you were able to work with quite a few people who were very much at the entry level of technology. And yeah, to I think a mix of some people were coming from design but hadn't really um, understood the user experience design side of it, how to make user insights a big part of their design process. Others might be um, coming from the development background and wanted to understand how to make sure what they were creating was uh, user friendly and would be delightful and engaging. Uh, so it's a pretty big blend of people coming from different places, I think, overall. but. Um, there was a lot of consistency in the kinds of activities that really helped them understand some key concepts. And kind of what got you involved in teaching to begin with? Because that's, that's uh, something that a lot of uh, tech people, we focus on our, our specific skill, but going back out and teaching that, what, what attracted you to that? Well, I think it, it started with me being a manager in my own team, so I had a chance to build out the user experience design group um, at different places where I had worked, you know, most recently Manifest Digital. And in course of doing that, you're mentoring the people in your group that you're bringing in. They might be coming in from different skill sets, um, and you want to kind of round it out. And uh, you also have to educate a lot of people in your organization about what UX is, why it's important. So I was creating a lot of those kinds of materials anyway for our sales and marketing uh, side and also for our own teams. And so it became kind of this natural progression of well, we should use this great resource to start teaching others how to do this because we're very passionate about making design thinking a part of business strategy and just overall problem solving in organizations. Uh, I think that the user experience field, you have a really rich set of people who think um, visually can tackle problems and can facilitate other people and explain those things really well. So those are the skills that we're trying to teach. And I think it was when I noticed that there was a gap between people coming in from a four-year university on applying some of the things they had, so we really focused on application. That's, that's what I wanted to, to get you, was the Starter League has a very um, fast-track, focused model, whereas university tends to be a little bit more um, more breathing room in, mm -hmm. in, in, in what the topics cover. The, the, you have to study English and some other topic, and your, whatever your focus of study is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to share your bandwidth between multiple topics, whereas Starter, starter League and, and similar are very focused on a single track. Has that been something, having taught at the university level versus working with students who are on a fast track, has that been something that's been a, a challenge or interesting? It is. I mean, it's it's good in one way that if there's something very specific you want to learn, you have either 10 week courses for a lot of them, um, you have a more condensed time frame where you can focus on just that. And then usually there are other classes in both organizations where I teach. There are other classes you could continue to take if you want to get the more full picture of right. things. Um, but you don't have to if you feel like this is really the gap that you need to address. That said, 10 weeks is a pretty short period yeah. of time. So uh, in the class, the UX design class I teach, we try to give you a foundation through um, the major design process and mm -hmm. get you some experience working uh, or interacting with others, like the development class, right. to give you a feeling of you're not just in this silo. Yeah. Uh, so there's some of the benefits there, but definitely it is a condensed kind of time frame and one 10-week course isn't going to you know, necessarily be the thing that Enough lets you just... take a whole new role on. Yeah. But I think it gives you the context and the confidence to start moving in the direction you want to. Is that something that maybe um, we're 
if you're a, you're a back-end developer and you just need to get some exposure, is, is Starter League something you might want to look at for learning more about different topics? Is like come in, do this um, hard and fast, learn this topic over 10 weeks, or is that something that you have to really dedicate 10 weeks? Um, there's, well, there's a couple of things that Starter League's doing. They also have Starter School. Um, which okay. is a more of a, a nine month if you want to if you want to achieve everything and you want something that brings that to you in a managed curriculum. Okay. Um, so for the people who do want that kind of experience, there's an option there mm -hmm. uh, that is a little bit more in depth. Um, for something like the development classes, those are even more immersive, even okay. for regular Star League classes. You need to be part time, okay. really, to do the development yeah. classes. Okay, so you have to, it is a it's it's a full on commitment to yeah. those classes. It isn't just like, well, I'm going to go in the afternoon and I'm going right. to spend an hour or two studying this. Stuff. The UX design class there is three hours in the night, so okay. there are a lot of people who are just who are doing it on top of their. Oh, okay, so you can work a job and go to Star League. Yeah, for some like HTML, CSS, and and UX design. Okay. And um, can we can you tell me a little bit about or tell the audience a little bit about what you're talking about here today and what you're Sure. Uh, my topic is uh, deep impact versus Armageddon. Oh. Uh, so at the classes where I teach, we do encourage users to or users, I mean our uh, students who are our users, um, to come up with their own design ideas mm -hmm. uh, and then flush those out. And uh, I just found that there were a lot of similarities in the kinds of problems people wanted to solve. There were a lot of people who were trying to create commuting applications and things like that. And so they were thinking about their pain. They were thinking about their pain. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's part of it. And Or just, yeah, what they, what they think a lot of people have to deal with. And it just made me think, you know, it's kind of like Hollywood where you these movies come out that are the same plot and what makes yeah. it different. You know, you have the same um, plot with Deep Impact and Armageddon. I don't right. know if you've seen those. Uh, I've seen one of them. I'm not going to say okay. which one. <laughs> oh, come on. I've seen them both a little too much now. Um, <laughs> But it was a really, I went through minute by minute basically and looked at them and against a scale, uh, kind of an experience scale. Uh, and it was really interesting to see the difference. A lot of people hate Michael Bay. Oh, really? But I have more respect for Michael Bay after doing this. So, anyway, I did the, I'm talking about that. Um, so, you're looking at strictly from a technical perspective, yeah. Look, from an experience. His movies are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it, yeah, I mean, it's it's for a specific audience that's not necessarily looking to change their world right, and their right. way of thinking. It's, it's, it's the McCheeseburger, right? Yeah, right. Um, so, the, uh, anyway, that that was, it was basically kind of a, an entry into design principles, which is one of the things that I teach also, and so I think it was a, it was a cool metaphor for that, and we'll be talking about that. Um, it's also, I'll probably share uh, an activity that we're working on for the new book, Adventures in Experience Design, um, in order to kind of illustrate that because I think a lot of teams don't incorporate things like design principles because they're not sure how to work with their teams to create them, and they're more effective when you can do that. So uh, it's kind of a, a good challenge to try to do that with your teams, and um, this might be just kind of a way to help people ramp up to that a little bit. One of the things you said about the trying to solve a problem for a lot of people, um, I just this morning I read uh, a piece by Seth Godin uh, where he talked about the. Have you seen the video? Why? What does the fox say? No, I haven't. You, you have to watch it, um, and I'll link to it. But the, the in the video, it, it's it's one of those videos that just hit every meme, viral video button, and it just went nuts and went all over the web. You, mm -hmm. Even if you don't go look for it, you'll eventually you'll see it. Okay. Uh, and he talks about how audience or developers and, and product designers shouldn't try to hit those buttons intentionally. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to hit them or you're not. Just try to serve an audience, focus on that audience, and just try to deliver quality to them. Yeah. If you go viral, then... Right, yeah. I think it's always funny. This is yeah. This is your proven formula for going viral. Well, right. you don't. People trying to do that all the time, and you don't always right. know what's going to happen. There are definitely some is, things that might get you there, you know. Or proven, proven. Uh, I know that I'm going to make the next great commuting app, and it's like, oh, there's already mm -hmm. Google Maps. So just let it go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking the yeah. time to sit down with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It was great talking to you. Thanks. When you're working with the people that are um, in, a, in, a, in a beginner's community, how are you reaching out to um, help teach some of the like community? Is there, is there anything you're working on? Like Railsbridge has the workshops. Is there anything that Starter League is working on for 
doing a similar kind of self-teaching? Um, Starter League is really uh, more focused on the, the classes, although they do focus on hackathons too, okay. which really brings a lot of beginners together. Um, but the, the book I'm working on now, Experience uh, Adventures and Experience Design, um, because it's so activity focused, there are also a lot of activities that are good for groups. Okay. And our hope is, um, my co-author is Anna Vansley. She comes from a toy and games background, mm -hmm. so she brings some of that game, you know. Okay, so it's like an activity. And, and, yeah, sorry, I, I misunderstood right, with the starter league, but um, so it's it's something that like a group can do. Yeah, absolutely. So it, um, adventures and experience design is written to be very modular in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, you ideally do go through it in a flow, yeah. but there's. Um, maybe a page that describes something, and then a, a activity sheet for you to try individually. And then we'll have these games where you can get together with a few people and try that game together, and that illustrates a certain concept okay. of design. So, so is this something home. like uh, a group to get together and say, okay, over six months we're going to go through the book and work through? Yeah, it's and it's only it's a hundred sixty eight page book, so mm -hmm. ideally it wouldn't even take six months. I could see it being a get together. We haven't tested this part out yet for how long people might do it. We're testing out the activities and games, but I could see, um, like, if you have a book club, usually mm -hmm. maybe you get together once a week right. and do a section together. It's kind of like um, the artist's way. I don't know if you I'm ever not, heard I'm of not that. Familiar with that. It was something influential where, in, in my life, I think, early, years ago, but um, people would get together. It's a book that was meant to get you thinking more creatively. Mm -hmm. And you'd read a chapter and then come together with people and do work on these activities. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's what it's modeled after, but for UX Somewhat. design. Yeah, but for UX design so that you can read something and then do some group activities together and mm -hmm. really learn things like how constraints can make you actually think more creatively right. sometimes. Just like Twitter and the 140 character on it. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's, it makes you be concise. Uh-huh, yep, or haikus, yep. you know, so... We we'll use that example in there too. So, um, so yeah, I would, I would really love for the book. I mean, it's meant to be a playful introduction, and I would love for people to play with it, including user groups and book clubs that meet regularly and want to do something more than just discuss the book. They want to actually try an activity out. Are you planning on there being any kind of forum or support for people who are trying out or to give feedback? Um, we are planning on because we also are hoping that this would be used in high schools and early <laughs> college, you know, kind of programs. So we are planning on doing an, an instructor's guide, but in this okay. case, maybe we would call it a facilitator's guide because right. it might not be. We don't Somebody want somebody to think that they have to be an instructor. Right. We just make sure everything is kind of moving smoothly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Get people together. Run, you know, have the materials and things like that. So uh, I think this would be really fun ways for for groups to learn together. Great. Well, thanks again for taking the time yeah. to sit down with me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.